So that I like that. That's pretty clever. But the game doesn't tell you what it thinks you should do. It just says, alright, here's some civilians. They're angry. What are you going to do? So I like that a lot. But then in other parts of the game, like you're lobbing white phosphorus mortars at hostile soldiers. And at the end of that, I was playing that. And like you're looking through a. You've got a drone in the sky looking down infrared. And so you can't really see what you're shooting at. You just see like dots where the vehicles and the and the people are. And I could tell that the final set of dots were civilians. And I didn't actually drop the white phosphorus on the civilians. But the game blew them up anyway. <laughs> So that was a bit forced. I mean, I didn't respect that. Because I, I could figure it out, just like the other part. Like I could, You could figure out that you shouldn't shoot directly at the civilians. You should like try to scare them off by shooting in the air. So like I could figure out what was going on. But the game forced that one because it wanted you to see the effects of white phosphorus on civilians. The way it burns them alive. So some parts of that game... Like, if you know what you're doing, you can do the right thing. And then other parts of the game, it just forces you into doing the wrong thing, no matter what. So the game, like, my pick up the line, I respect it, I don't fully respect it. I think it could be a little better. But I, I respect the overall... ...attempt. And, and what they tried to do. Although, although, I think in some parts they could have done a little better. But a very interesting... In that it, it makes you, it puts you in a position where it's very easy for you to commit atrocities. And you really have to be like, on your toes and understand what exactly you're doing at all times. And then at, at, in one part of the game, you're fighting enemies, and then suddenly a civilian runs at you. <laughs> I shot that civilian because it was just running at me and I didn't... Like, I shot before I really identified who they were. So that was the... I think the only civilian in that game that I actually killed, legit killed. And even that's clever, because it's like, you're in a war zone, there are enemies, and then suddenly a, a, a civilian runs across the screen. And again, it's like, it's so easy to just like, twitch pull the trigger at anything that moves. And so they just kill civilians. And that's what happens in wars, all the time. So it, it spec ops the line, it's, it says a lot of very interesting things about war. And mo like mostly it talks about how easy it is to commit atrocities in war. It's, it's, a, it's a great game, but it could be even better in some places in my opinion. So I respect that game a lot. Because it, it, it talks about evil in a way that really understands what it's talking about. I'm not sure how other people play the game. At the very end of that game, you finally get rescued by by other 
soldiers who haven't been in the conflict, so they, they're kind of fresh and they're not crazy the way you are. Because <laughs> they haven't been through the all the civilian murdering and all that. And at the, like the very last scene, you could either accept being taken back, or you can like shoot them because you're still holding the gun. You're still interacting with the world only through guns. And so you could you could just like shoot your own allies and then they will shoot you back and then like you basically suicide by by marines. So they give you that option. I'm just not entirely sure why they give you that option. I wonder if some people playing that game they get so messed up that they really do try to commit suicide in the game. Because I guess, I don't know, maybe if you feel guilt. It didn't entirely work on me because I understood what was going on and I didn't really feel guilt because I didn't do anything guilty, in my opinion. But given that the game gives you so many opportunities to just murder civilians when you don't have to, maybe some people botch so badly that they actually feel guilty at the end of the game. And they decide to... to not go back. And to uh, suicide. That's a real thing too with uh, military veterans. There's a lot of PTSD and a lot of guilt for some people. And also a lot of suicide in veterans. That's a real thing. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. Uh, I do know that I was not that inclined. I was not inclined to do that. But maybe other people who play the game would be. It's quite possible. I mean, the story is... The story of that game is that the main character is actually involved in a lot of atrocities. Although only some of them involve the player being in control of him as he, do, as he does so. A lot of it is implied in the backstory. Even that, like it's a. Uh, I think it really promotes empathy. <laughs> really, to. I mean, it seems. Actually, now that I think about it, it seems kind of like perverse. But by forcing the player to participate in atrocities. <laughs> uh, I should be careful how I phrase this, shouldn't I? <laughs> But sometimes, like, people's opinions of evil or criminal behavior, like, a lot of it is, is very simplistic. And, and, like, demonstrates a real lack of understanding for how other people in other positions experience things. So in the sense that it promotes empathy for why people might end up doing bad things, not to justify the bad behavior, but to understand that we are all vulnerable to making bad decisions. That is not some exceptional thing when someone does something bad, like it's not an exceptional thing. It's just one bad decision and you're an awful person. <laughs> it 
it's actually quite easy <laughs> to become that awful person if you're not careful. So that kind of empathy, I think I, I think that's important. Because in a way, if you underestimate... Oh, what's this? Okay, that should be that. If you underestimate... Um, like, if you overestimate your own morality, and you underestimate how easy it is for you to participate in atrocities, if the conditions were right, or you know, if the conditions were awful, how easily you could be manipulated into participating in the in atrocities, then you are vulnerable to committing those atrocities because you don't understand how careful you have to be to avoid being the bad guy. It's still not a perfect game, Spec Ops The Line, it's still not, um, it's, in my opinion, it still doesn't quite talk about it correctly. But it's mostly just the details. The general message is correct. Some of the details I would have done a little differently, but I guess that's a minor thing. Nothing I should get too hung up about. That tree has to go. That one there. far. Oops. Uh, there it stops. Skyrim? I'm thinking about the portrayal of racism in Skyrim. Uh, in Skyrim, the Nords are kind of racist. <laughs> and... Uh, especially uh, over in... What's the city called? I, f I forgot the names already. Especially with um, Ufric. And the game kind of lets you join the other faction, join the Imperials, 
to uh, fight against the racist Nord rebels, which in a way mirrors the American Civil War, right? Like there's a there's the Empire, and then there's the rebels who talk about fighting for their traditions or whatever that is, but it turns out they're just racist. <laughs> <laughs> their traditions are racism, and uh, they're trying to preserve their racism, <laughs> and to split off from the Empire, and the Empire declares war. So there's a civil war on one side to preserve the integrity of the Empire, on the other side to try to continue being racist. Anyway, so that's Skyrim. And it allows you to choose one side or the other, but it, the game itself doesn't really say anything about racism. Like, it portrays it, but it's kind of neutral. Not that I think about it. The story, I don't think, ever says racism is bad. The characters, like, you see people who, like the Khajiit and the Argonians, you can see them being oppressed, and they talk about how it's bad to be oppressed. I don't know, I'm just thinking, like, is the game not being responsible enough in its storytelling? Because it gives you the option of joining the rebels and helping them win. And then the world is just more racist then, but the, the story doesn't really take a stance against that racism. And in fact Fallout 4 is similar. Fallout 4 the The Institute keeps synths as slaves, which is kinda wrong. And then the Brothers of Steel wants to exterminate all the ghouls and mutants. Which I mean a lot of the ghouls and well not the mutants, but a lot of the ghouls are actually just humans and they're like not, not evil or anything so the brotherhood is racist the institute keeps slaves and you have the option of opposing them and eventually overthrowing them to stop their slavery and to stop their racism but you don't have to, you can also join them. The game also gives you the option of joining them. And the game, like, it talks about these things, but it doesn't really take a position on these things. It allows you, the player, to take a position on these things. But the game itself does not take a position on these things. Which is a little dubious, in my opinion. Because going back to, um, what I said earlier about crime stories, about how stories like The Godfather or Grand Theft Auto 4 or Sleeping Dogs, like you are, like you are playing as a criminal, but there are costs, right? There are you have to pay a price for your criminal behavior. Like your friends die, your family gets murdered, and you get attacked because you, you know you use violence to attack others so they retaliate and so there's like a the story tells you that there's a price to pay when you are evil and that is some like it's a kind of justice like it's a kind of poetic justice or a narrative justice where because you are a criminal you pay a personal price in the story. Whereas in Skyrim and in Fallout 4, if you help the Institute or the Brotherhood or if you fight for Ufric, the story doesn't talk about you suffering any losses because you're choosing evil. Like you're choosing to support racism or slavery, and it doesn't. Hmm. Now that I think about it, I'm a bit dubious about 
office test that's going on about with those stories. I mean, you might argue that they're letting the player decide. But that's not like that's not the thing I have a problem with letting the people the player decide. It's that the player's decisions have no consequences. That's my problem. <laughs> 